The Dynamic Island has been here for quite a while now. It's been part of the iPhone 14 Pro and entire iPhone 15 lineup. And the keyword here is iPhone lineup. While notch cutout has been adopted by devices outside of the iPhone, the Dynamic Island hasn't. On my iPhone, it is pretty useful, so should Apple bring this feature also to iPads? First of all, it would be an interesting evolution in the iPad lineup. But if you have a problem to imagine what it could look like on an iPad, well, there are people who have seen the Dynamic Islands to be part of it. Namely, one person on Reddit has reported that after updating their iPad to iPadOS 16.2, the device started glitching. And it got to a point where the entire Dynamic Island got shown on the actual iPad screen. But the interesting part is that it didn't behave in a glitchy way. I mean, it had nothing to do there, of course, but it kind of worked. The person shows us the unlocking animation after the use of Face ID, and also the charging animation showed up briefly when connecting to power. So it behaved just like on the iPhone. So in case you couldn't imagine how it could look on a such big screen, well, this offers you a glimpse of how it could behave. Keep in mind, however, that it was just a glitch, something that wasn't supposed to be there. So in case Apple wanted to officially introduce it, we can expect it to be much more polished and better looking. But we need to slow down a little bit with all these speculations because it's important to know why the Dynamic Island exists to begin with, and what is the main function of it. The island hasn't been invented to make the iPhone 14 Pro look different than the other iPhones, at least not primarily. The main reason behind its existence is the need to hide some necessary components of the iPhone. Think about it, why is there a notch on most iPhones? Well, there has to be the front-facing camera, Face ID sensor, and a bunch of other components that have to be accommodated somewhere. This was the problem, and a notch was the solution. And the Dynamic Island was just a bit better solution. But there is no such problem on the iPad. Even on the full-screen iPad models, the bezel is in fact thick enough to accommodate all the necessary parts you would expect from your iPad. So, if the Dynamic Island doesn't solve anything on the iPad, why even think about putting it in this device? In my opinion, it could easily unify the look of Apple devices. Like, make the ecosystem even more tight-knit. What I'm trying to say is that notifications on iPhone look the same as on iPad, at least most of the time. The usual slide-down bubble containing the app name, logo, and the content looks the same on both platforms. However, the iPhone started to switch over a little bit. Some notifications on iPhones that support a dynamic island, of course, look different now. They expand from the island, the background is black, and it looks good, if you ask me. But we are still in this awkward situation where some notifications look the old way, some are from the Dynamic Island, and it is clear that Apple wants the new, modern way to display notifications, so it would make sense to keep it this way. So then, why not also bring it over to the iPad and make everything feel the same? That is my reasoning why it could make sense to have this feature on iPad as well. But now, can we realistically expect this to ever happen? Well, there is always the possibility. Apple proved that they have no problem to bring some elements across their lineup. Face ID is now available across iPads and iPhones. Notch Display and Touch ID, for example, is available on the iPad, MacBook, even the Magic Keyboard. So, even though it's not completely out of the question, there are certain problems and hurdles that need to be overcome before the iPad could ever feature the Dynamic Island. The first one is that the iPhone has a distinct top, where the front-facing camera is located, and a bottom, where the charging port and speakers are found. This physical layout, and also the software, encourages holding the phone in a certain way. Also, certain functionalities like making phone calls are designed with this orientation in mind. 
where the speaker is at the top and the microphone is at the bottom. This implies that the position of Dynamic Island is clear. It fits perfectly at the top. Sometimes it also works in the landscape view on the iPhone, but it certainly looks out of place there. The iPads are different though. Yes, if you flip the iPad, there is the Apple logo which shows you where the top and bottom is, but it's designed for versatility, where no single orientation is consistently preferred. Like, it is okay to use it in any orientation. iPadOS supports this adaptive user interface that adjusts to how the device is held. Icons, menus, and everything else shifts seamlessly between portrait and landscape orientations. This adaptability encourages users to use the device in whatever way feels most comfortable for the task at hand without a strong bias towards a top or a bottom. So this begs the question, where would the Dynamic Island be then? And it's certainly not an answer question just yet. The island could also bother and stand in the way during some creative activities like drawing or editing photos. So yeah, this is more of a fun speculation than actual prediction for the iPad. But who knows, Apple might want to refresh the lineup a little bit in the future. The glitch showcased by the Reddit user could indicate that the iPad OS has some kind of dynamic island behind the scenes. But at the end of the day, we can only wait and see what the next major iPad OS version brings. Thank you very much for watching and if you want to support the channel and get access to some additional premium content that I'm currently working on, the link to my private Foxtech TV community is in the description, so if you feel interested, just check it out. If not, it's completely fine. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next video.